Good evening, Saints. I'm so glad that we have this opportunity to connect for a little conversation tonight. And I pray that your day is blessed and your night is blessed wherever you are. For those of you who are tuning in tonight, we're going to be discussing some of the things as I describe it as majoring in the minors. Majoring in the minors. And what I mean by that is that there are oftentimes I hear or have interaction with uh, believers, some churchgoers, some people who may seem to be uh, agnostic or skeptics as it relates to the things of God. And I certainly can understand from those who may not be openly attached to church or religion why they may be somewhat hesitant to voice their opinions and to make a visible expression of their faith. I think some of the reasons, as I've encountered and had conversations with others, is that it appears that people really use other people as the standard of righteousness or as the standard of what it means to be right, look right, do right. But that is kind of the error because anytime you put your faith, your hope, trust in a person, then you're setting yourself up for a letdown. Scripture says, and I'll look it up in just a moment, uh, put not your trust in man, put your trust in God. So I do understand that people look to people who say they're people of God, man of God, woman of God, if you want to use that terminology. I understand why they may have an expectation because people want to believe that people can actually uh, live quote unquote holy. It's the root word of the word holy simply means to be set apart or above all things. And so there's only one that is above all, that is God. For Jesus says in scripture that there's none righteous, no, not one. And even when they refer to him as righteous. So Jesus understood that the standard was not to measure ourselves or other believers or other Christians against other people. The standard that we all measure ourselves by is God. He's holy and righteous and just. Jesus Christ is his example. Uh, Paul says that we should be imitators, imitators of Christ. So I want to encourage you, and I, oftentimes people have questions that they want to ask about spiritual things, things that's related to the church as they know it, or religion in general. Feel free to contact me. Feel free to contact me. Our email address is info, I-N-F-O, at agministries.net. You can also visit our main website, which is Amazing Grace Ministries, www.ag ministries.net and so we're going to be starting some uh, weekly maybe discussions conversations we'll, we'll probably also be opening up our conference line for people to get some lifetime interaction and to, to answer some questions that's related to spiritual things or just life in general from a biblical perspective and when I say that it's not saying that we're going to just look up scriptures and say, here, the scripture says this about that. Even though that can be helpful and useful if we read it and understand it in context of the who, what, when, where, and why. But oftentimes people just simply throw scriptures out there that are really not connected to uh, the context of what it was written in. So with all of our getting, thanks to God, the Bible reminds us that we want to get understanding. That is the ability to accurately process the information. Okay? And so this is why I want to take this time. I'm feeling uh, that many people, maybe they feel like Nicodemus. In that case, Nicodemus came to Jesus at night to ask him spiritual questions. That he was obviously embarrassed or didn't want any others to know that he had questions about certain things. And I think there are many people today, some people may even be in ministry, 
or a faithful church goer. May have been a believer for a long time, but you still have some questions about certain things that seem to be st stretching you beyond your comfort zone in your thinking and your understanding. And so feel free to contact me, info at agministries.net. And I'll love to pray with you, for you, and we can perhaps find some scripture and seek God's understanding and wisdom as it relates to these things. Because people need God, yes. But God didn't come to the earth to create himself. He created man. God wanted to have fellowship with us. And that means, and not only did he create just one man, he also created woman. For he said it wasn't good that man should be alone. So not only are we created to have fellowship with God, we're created to have fellowship with one another. And as you look at the book of Genesis, as you look at the account of Adam and Eve in the garden, for instance, it says they were naked and not ashamed. And I think a lot of people do what Adam and Eve did. They know that we fall short in certain areas of life, and that's something common to every person that walks on the earth, for we all have fallen short of the glory of God. And we try to cover those areas that we feel we fall short in because we don't want to be exposed before others. We don't want to be embarrassed. We don't want to be shamed. That's how Adam and Eve felt with the guilt of shame. And of course, Jesus Christ came to take upon himself all of our shame, all of our guilt, so that we don't have to continue to walk in a way of being shamed because we've been forgiven. And that is if we have accepted the forgiveness of God, which is sometimes very difficult for us to do. But I pray that as we get a better understanding, as we open our heart and mind up, as we allow ourselves to be, uh, first of all, be real with God, be real with yourself. And once you make peace with God and make peace with yourself, you'll be able to make peace or find peace as you relate to others. For God has already declared you free. A scripture in the Bible says, For he, for him who the Son sets free is free indeed. And so we need to be able to really relate to the text of scripture. It's more than just a Bible verse that we just throw out. Even though I believe that's power connected to the word of God, to God's words, the principles. So I believe that the, those who wrote and spoke the words that were written for us were inspired by God. And he, and, uh, in other words, they were operating under the empowerment of the of the Holy Spirit as they wrote and shared their thoughts and shared their experiences that they had. And so the same inspiration, the same power by which they spoke as the Bible was being written and shared with us, it's the same power or inspiration that's available to each and every believer today. So you don't have to beg God to pour out his spirit upon you for it is his desire at least according to the scripture text in the book of Acts if you get a chance look at the book of Acts chapter 2 or read the entire book of Acts you'll see the, the even though many Bibles say it is the Acts of the Apostles we understand really that it is the Acts of the Holy Spirit through the Apostles and so the Holy Spirit so this is, we see these examples in the scriptures can work through us in whatever ways are relevant to confront circumstances, situations that oppose to God. We, we have access to that same spirit. We have access to the same anointing. And this is why it's so very important that we get past the, in some uh, sub subcultures, I like to call it, in some subcultures of the, the church, Okay, when I talk about the church, I'm talking about all believers everywhere. Not about a particular denomination that we call church, Lutheran, Episcopalian, Presbyterian, Baptist, Methodist. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about holistically. But if you look at these subcultures, we see where some of the division comes in. One group believes this, another 
another group does not. One group practices worship like this, another group doesn't. And so that's not something that unifies us if we cannot accept the differences that people don't have to do what I do, the way I do it, in order to be right with God. So God is a God of all creation. He's a God of variety and diversity. He's made all of us unique in our own ways, but he loves each and every one of us just as we are. So we can learn a lesson, or I pray that we can learn that lesson from God himself. If he loves us just the way we are, and that is the good, the bad, and the ugly. Now, he doesn't, he's not pleased with everything we may do, but he loves us. So we need to take that same attitude. I remember the Apostle Paul, and somewhere in the text, said, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. And if you have a concordance now with the uh, invention of this great technology of the internet, you can just Google these phrases that I use for Bible verses, and you can you know, find out where they are in Scripture. So it's not difficult if you really want to know. It's not. It's, it's very simple and easy today. Most people, anything they want to find information about, they Google it. They, search, they research it on the internet. And so anything that you want to know to get a little better understanding of it is to Google the phrase or the term or ask what is this, where is this found in the Bible, what does this mean. Now you may not be able to totally rely on whatever information you find, but it may help to point you in the right direction for as the Apostle Paul in one of the Bible letters to a young pastor named Timothy he says to study to show yourself approval to God. All right, as a worker who need not be ashamed, but you can rightly divide the word of truth. So I encourage you, every, every person, believer, if you're listening to this message, obviously you have access to the internet. And if you can research some of the questions that you may have, you can also contact me at my email address that I gave you earlier and share your questions prayer requests, praise reports with me also. There may be many people who may not be uh, in fellowship with a local body of believers. Uh, there's a scripture that says, wherever two or three are gathered in my name, there are I in the midst of them. He wasn't just talking about gathered in a, in a certain geographic place, but we have to be one on one accord or one heart, or one mind with each other. See, so we can be physically present in the same place at the same time with people, but not connected as one. So if we can use the internet, email, text, chat lines, all these things are available through our ministries. We want to be able to connect with those who may be near and or far. Sometimes it's easier to talk to a person or to really express yourself to someone that that you may not really know. Uh, and some of the time of that is based on our fear of rejection or fear of being judged by others. So I understand that. God understands that. And so hopefully you, are, you also at the same time understand that God is not like man. So you don't have to worry about uh, God rejecting you. He may reject the things that we do, but he never rejects us. So let's understand, we have to learn to make that distinction, learn to understand that separation, because I feel a lot of people are staying away from God, so to speak, because of their own fears and perceptions that they have that God is like the people who may have hurt them or let them down or disappointed them or people that you couldn't please. And God is not someone that's impossible to please. God doesn't expect us to please him. He expects us to allow him to live in us, to give us the wherewithal or the power to fulfill his will for our lives. So God has a plan and purpose but he's also engaged himself in that plan and purpose for us. So he doesn't leave that to us alone to figure out by ourselves. And so this is why it's good to have just a conversation. 
surrounded the things of God. Again, if you have any questions, praise, prayer requests, praise reports, feel free to reach out to me. This is something we're going to start doing. Um, I'll be announcing some of the conference call times where you can call in. You can just listen. You don't have to share. You don't have to talk unless you want to. Uh, you can just listen to some of this conversation. We also have it where you can be online and you, if you don't want to mention your question or prayer over the phone, audibly, you can type it in and we'll be able to see it on the, on the little chat screen there. So whatever way makes it comfortable for you, whatever gives you more freedom, more liberty, we want to create an atmosphere of grace for people just to be themselves, where you can be symbolically naked and not ashamed. So we all have sinned and fallen short, but Jesus Christ has come to bridge the gap between where we fell short or fall short and where God wants us to be. There's a text also in scripture, again, you can make note of this and Google it. I believe it's in the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, where Paul says, God has placed some in the church as apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, and evangelists. And when I mention the word church, remember, we're talking about the church. We're not talking about a church building, not talking about a church denomination. We're talking about God has placed some within the body of Christ who have been gifted and anointed with spiritual gifts. All right. And has an office of a gift. They operate in the office using their spiritual gifts of apostles, which are those who are sent forth with a divine message from God to different places, usually where it has not yet been fully embraced or established. Prophets who speak under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, foretelling and foretelling, inspiring people with the word of God. Pastors, those who shepherd and care for the people of God. Teachers who help others to understand the things of God evangelists who give a clear proclamation of the gospel of Jesus Christ to those who so that they can accept him into their lives but he said he can give these special gifts or offices or anointings to equip the saints not to embolden themselves but to equip the saints for works of service to bring the saints to maturity and to the full stature of the measure of Christ so you see, if you think about that text, it definitely tells us we don't need to be looking to compare ourselves to other people. If we're going to compare ourselves as far as the standard of righteousness, we look at Christ Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. What qualified him to do that? Well, he had to be without spot or blemish himself in order to take away our sins. And so this is the reality of what salvation, what deliverance for our souls is all about. And this is, that is the beginning. That is the beginning of being made whole and complete. Understanding the message of salvation that has been brought to us through Jesus Christ. And, and prayerfully through those that God has placed within the church. Through whatever anointings and giftings they have. You can take a look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12 as an example for some of the spiritual gifts. In the, in, the, in the practical workings of what they're designed to do. We also have a course in our Bible college called Spiritual Gifts. You can order a copy of that textbook. It's also available in ebook format, so contact us. Find out how you can get a hold of that. And, and there are many other subjects that we can we talk about. Uh, in our, for instance, in our Bible college and seminary, we have a certificate program in education, leadership, counseling. We also have Associates in Christian Theology, which is understanding man's relationship with God or God's relationship with mankind, how he wants to relate, which is a part of having a relationship with you. So we both must understand each other in order to have a good relationship, and we must communicate with each other. Same thing is helpful for human relationships are definitely beneficial to our relationship with God. And so let's not take away from the uh, the reality of what Jesus came to do. He came from heaven to earth. He didn't take us from the earth to heaven. So he wants 
us to relate to God in the here and now, right where we are. Of course, that will that will make our experience when we enter into the kingdom of heaven that much more precious when we when we can have fellowship with God without all the the things that affect us negatively in this earth. But while the things in this earth may affect us negatively, God stepped into that situation for us, with us. And this is why when the angels pronounced the shepherds out in the field, he said, Emmanuel, which means God is with us. And, and hallelujah. So that, that is even true, even to this point. So I pray that as you see the, the flow of the conversation that, that we can have with each other, uh, we can get into a teaching or a preaching mode where it's just shooting out information. And there's time and place for all of that. We, we, we offer all of those types of different type of workings of the Spirit. But as I look at the ministry of Jesus as he just introduced himself to others, it, the message wasn't about him. The message was about them. The message was about the persons that he was interacting with. So he simply spoke with them in a conversational tone. They think about the woman at the well. He didn't pull out his Bible and start quoting scriptures because there was no Bible as we know it at that time. But they did have scrolls of the Old Testament and Jesus didn't use that. So if Jesus is our example, we need to look to him as the example and follow that example because obviously what he did worked. People came to him. So he says, if I be lifted up, I will draw men to myself. And so he exalted the Father who had sent him into earth. He always acknowledged that he's only doing what his Father has sent him to do. He was humble. So as we walk in the inspiration and the Spirit of God, we should humble ourselves before God, acknowledging him, allowing him to use us, to work through us, to bring hope, healing, peace, love, joy, deliverance, whatever it is that people need, because only God knows what people really need. We don't, but it, it, it'd be helpful and it's good to understand that God wants to work through us and work with us. So Emmanuel, God is with us. And so hopefully you're getting something from um, the atmosphere that we hope to create through our conversations that I look forward to having with each and every one of you. I want you to know that you're not alone. Not only is God with us, with you, there are other believers that God has assigned in the earth to connect with for fellowship, caring and sharing. If you're in the uh, Atlanta area, uh, we can even get together for fellowship. If you would like for dinner, lunch, coffee, tea, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be quote unquote set up in an organized religious service. I was sharing with someone this week that faith is an integral part of my life, but religion is not. So faith in God, faith in Christ is what is required of us, not our religion. Uh, and so we it, sometimes I think it's difficult for people to know the difference between the two. Is faith a part of religion? Yes. But religion is not necessarily a part of faith. You can have faith without religion. And you can also have religion without faith. But if you look at an example in the book of Hebrews, and again, you can Google these phrases as they come out. Um, it says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. I think it's in the book of Hebrews. And also it says that we show that we have faith by our works, by what we do. Not just because we say we have faith, but it needs to be examples of our faith. And this is why our faith needs to grow. Uh, I, my ministry, is God inspired me as I was in the first Persian Gulf War with the mandate for my ministry, which is Amazing Grace Ministry. And coming from, I was reading the book of Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 through 10, which paraphrase says that for by grace am I saved through faith. The grace of God is there, but I must embrace it through faith. 
as a gift from God. And I remember saying back, not with my audible voice, but at this point I was having a conversation with the Holy Spirit who was, who was in, in my heart. We speak from the heart. We think from the heart. God judges our heart. He was in my heart. And I remember saying, from my heart, but I don't deserve it. And the Holy Spirit spoke back to me that it's by grace, that it's unmerited favor, it's undeserved. And it says simply to me, all I had to do was, re was to receive it. That's all we have to do with a gift, saints. You don't, a gift means just that. It's something that someone gets for you, purchases for you, or presents to you. It costs you nothing. The person who provides the gift has paid the cost. Jesus Christ has paid the cost for each and every one of us. And all we have to do is accept the gift. The gift of the Holy Spirit. Which is talked about in the book of Acts. Again, chapter 2 and chapter 1. Where he promised that in the gift that I have promised, you will receive the gift that was promised. And on the day of what we call Pentecost, the early disciples received that gift. And the rest of the book of Acts is the expression of what it means to accept that gift. If someone gives you a sweater, the next thing they see is they see you wearing it. Hallelujah. And so God wants you to be in power with the Holy Spirit. And it's not a deep spiritual thing. It's just like I'm saying, someone give you a sweater, just wear it. God gives you the gift of the Holy Spirit, put it on. Clothe yourself in Christ. And then the, the whole image of who you are will be transformed because of the gift. Not because you change, but because the gift changes you. Praise God. And so these are hopefully some of the conversations we think that will help those who you know may have been in faith for a while. Uh, maybe new to faith. Again, I, I recommend that you visit our Bible College and Seminary site. You may see some courses there that may be something that you want to get more understanding about. You can contact us. You can work the ebook or the textbook. You don't have to enroll in a course in order to get the information. But maybe some of you who listen who say, hey, I want to get a, a program study, uh, associate's degree, bachelor's, master's, doctorate degree, whatever level you're at, we can work with you to get that done as well. But the bottom line of all of our getting, we want to get understanding. We want to be able to know how to accurately use the information. We want to put it into practice in our lives. We don't want to just learn about love. We want to express love. We want to live in love. We don't want to just learn about peace. We want to have peace. We want to live at peace with others. We don't want to just learn about joy. We want to have joy and share that joy with others. This is the, the reality of the kingdom of God. That Jesus was proclaiming to us. That he wants us to have these things in our midst. As a part of our everyday lives. So again. I could go on and on. But I try to keep a limit to maybe 30 minutes. For these conversations that we have. I look forward to hearing from those of you. Who may have questions, comments, prayer requests, praise reports. You may want to connect with us. If you're locally. If you're out of the local area. We can still find time to do some connecting. Through our conference calls. And fellowship in whatever way we can. So again, thank you for this opportunity. I'm Lyndon Hutcherson, founder of Amazing Grace Ministries. Our mandate is to restore worship and to reveal lives with the Word of God. Again, feel free to reach out to me, Saints. My email address is info, I-N-F-O, at agministries.net. That's info at agministries.net. Again, I look forward to speaking with you. Thank you for this opportunity, and we give God the praise and glory and honor for this time of conversation. God bless you, saints. Till next time, be blessed.